Welcome to the Lowdown on Ghana Web TV. This is your most informative socioeconomic program you could find online. We bring you the facts and updates on issues that matter to you. My name is Ni Akwe Ismail Akwe. In this edition, we are going to discuss some of the issues that are happening around the country, specifically the economic hardships that Ghanaians are facing. We spoke to all the experts, we spoke spoke to all the stakeholders. However, we are here to speak with Ghanaians, ordinary Ghanaians in various sectors of the country to tell us how they experience some of these decisions that have been taken by stakeholders and also those in leadership. Four prices are up. We can buy a liter of fuel between eight cities and nine cities. The dollar rate is really high. Dollar is selling at seven cities, 30 pesos. And there's more to it. And we would discuss this with people who are like you and myself, common Ghanaians who purchase stuff, don't get per DMs, and also work so hard to make ends meet. We'll be right back after this break. Welcome back from the break. This is The Lowdown. My name is Ni Akwe Ismail Akwe. This discussion is very important to you and me. And we are going to talk to ordinary Ghanaians who are going to speak about the issues that are going on in the country that are leading to the hardships that we have. We have a number of them here in the studio. We are using a table, which is a bit unusual for this program. However, we have three people here. One of our guests is in IT, the other is in sales, and then the other is in the media. Let me start introducing our guest for today and we have Alexander Ajiman he is an IT specialist and we have Fatima Adagbila Tahiru who is also in sales and we have George AC he is a media personality and a journalist welcome guys and lady thank, thank, you. You. thank you let me start with Alex have you eaten today this morning yes what, what did you eat if I, I may ask I drank porridge and bread is that your typical breakfast oh Usually, I would go with a croissant and then cafe. But then the way the economy is um, it's turning upside down, yeah, this day you have to cut costs. So cocoa is a bit yes. cheaper yes. than your regular croissant and your coffee. coffee? Yes. OK. What about you, uh, Fatima? Oh, I drank Lipton, plain Lipton, and then bread. Is the economic situation of the country yeah, uh, a, a direct influence to the lifting that you drank? Yes, because on a regular, probably I might do red, red, but now red, red is now expensive. <laughs> That's quite interesting. So, and what about you, George? Do you also have the same situation? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's still been the usual banku early in the morning, except that this time around you are having to buy more because the size has reduced and when you are buying more to you are thinking of how much it is going to affect you and all that. What's the most significant change that you've seen in the past one year that really shocked you? For me, it has to do with the um, prices of um, transport, transport fares. I... Can you take us through what you are facing? Where do you pick your, uh, is it a, a bus or do you use taxis or use uh, the boat or Uber service? How much is it from where you pick it from? And how much do you pay? How much do you budget in a week? How was it before that? So, um, depending on the exigencies, I, I, I relate between the trotro and the boat. I, I, I switch between trotro and boat. So, at first, boat rate was very manageable. You could move in and out of places with that at your convenience. But now, the rate has gone up. Trotro as, as well. So, I do from Taifa to... Achimota old station, the Achimota old station to Jowlu, which is my usual um, route, uh, route to work. Here's the case that transport has gone up. And I, it is something that I find mind-boggling when it comes to my um, movement from Achimota to Jowlu. Because you are coming to work the same uh, route, you are coming to work, you are paying something different. And when you are going back, it is something different. It's, Something I've always struggled to get my head around the mathematics. Why is it that the same route when you are coming, it's, uh, the cost is different, and when you are going, the cost is different? But then it, they, they, like they say it is. So how much? How much do you pay averagely? So from from last year, it was around um, one fifty 
I think the early last year, late uh, mid last year to end. Uh, hundred and fifty. No, no, one city fifty percent. One city fifty percent yes, for the church. It's, it's quite from Taifa to. No, no, I mean um, Achimota to okay. Jowlu here. It's pretty short. When Achimota you know, to Jowlu. It's one yes. city fifty percent. That was back then. Okay. Between then and now, it has gone up to three cities. Three cities yes. from Achimota to Jowlu. Yes. And that's about a fifteen minute journey. Not even up to fifteen minutes. Not up to fifteen minutes. When even when you when you take out the traffic, it should okay. five minutes maximum. Okay. So let's say one city fifty percent so is three cities. Yeah. So when you are returning, that's another three cities, yeah. and that's six cities. Yeah. And then from Taifa, do you continue from, from Achimota? Achimota to Taifa as well? I think that that has also gone from between two cities, twenty pesos to three cities. So that's also another three cities. Yes. So both will be twelve cities a day. Yes. Twelve cities yes. a day to work every day. Yes. So um, let's 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 calculate this. You work five days a week. Yeah. So five days a week, twelve cities by five. That will be 60. And then in a month, that's uh, four weeks. That's going to be uh, 240 Ghana cities. And I, I do work weekends sometimes. Sometimes. So averagely about 300 cities on transportation in a month. So imagine someone is paid about, let's say, assume 800 Ghana cities or 1,000 cities. One third of it is gone into transportation. So Fatima, is it the same situation for you? Are you also facing the same transportation issues and seeing the changes like George is uh, seeing absolutely i had the same experience even this morning of an increment that i wasn't aware of so i live as painters so in the morning from my house to the junction i have to pick a car so it used to be two cities and with the last increment of four they moved to two cities 50 pesos then from the junction that i get off from the taxi i pick the trotro to Fiesta Royal. It was four cities and it's now four cities, 50 pesos. But when I'm going back home, I have to pick three cars. So from Fiesta Royal, I pick a car, two cities. From Fiesta Royal to Akramo, actually, it's not far, but it's two cities now. Mm. Then from Akramo to the junction of my house is um, um, four cities now. Mm. Yes, then I'll pick another car, taxi, that will take me to my house junction, which is three cities, 50 pesos. That's so in a day, yes, in, it's even more than ten cities because in a day I think I spend like seventeen cities on transportation, on transportation alone. daily. Wow. So if I should multiply that by the number of times I come to work, so let me just take Saturday and Sunday out, the five times I come to work, if I should multiply it, I should be heading towards four hundred or something in a month. So that's exempted for work. Then ask myself that, okay, what if I'm going to the market on Saturday? right how much am i going to spend to go to the market and afterwards if i have other things i have to do i have to pick transportation so if as you said somebody earning 800 cities so let's say i'm the one earning the 800 cities and at the end of the month i spend almost 600 on transportation what do i use the 200 for mm. we are not even talking about full stuff this is just transportation so it's a big deal for me that's quite um, a huge blow to yeah. a lot of people who yeah. are earning below a thousand cities yeah. and i know even those who earn more than a thousand cities yeah. who face the same situation yeah. and alex i understand you drive yes is it the same situation for you four prices are they going up yes, everybody's yes. crying about that the four increment is, is, is a lot i think government has to do something about it. Um, a month ago, around February 16th, four was 7.90 per liter. And then just this Tuesday, it was 8.220. Yesterday, it was 9.60. A week, I buy, uh, initially, that's February, I was buying 300 CDs a week because I, I do Tema trips. I live in Tema, mm. so I do it five times in a week. Mm. So. And I started buying, after the 8.22, the, the Tuesday increment, uh, sorry, before yesterday's increment, that was Tuesday, I was buying 3.50 a liter. And then I'm yet to calculate a new one, that is 9.60. It's a lot, like, I'm, I'm heading like 1,600, spending that just on, on fuel. For, for a month? Yes, for a month. So is it better to drive or is it better to get onto the, the 300 CD or 400 CD range? You see, it's, you see driving is, is a necessity. It depends on the type of job you do, you do where you live. It brings some, some comfort. But as of now, it is becoming a punishment mm. because the fuel is a lot. And I think fuel increment affects everything. It affects um, transport. transport. When fuel is increased, transport fares 
automatically gets increased. It affects goods and services, the price of commodities, everything goes up because market women, they're going to bring full stuff, they'll charge. Like, they'll start charging um, higher fees for yeah. full stuff. So um, I think the what government needs to do is the tax on petroleum products, he needs to, I mean, decrease it or cut some more so that we, we the citizens can, I mean, the pressure is too much so that we can, yes. I understand there's going to be a meeting on that yes. for some of the taxes to be taken out and then to bring some kind of relief to Ghanaians. Yes. However, has it affected your mobility? Do you move around as you normally do? No, no. Because I understand a lot of people now park their cars yes, to, yes, these days to just all, stay at home and go yes, nowhere. These days all my movements are calculated. I mean, if, if I move, then it's, it's geared towards money. If I'm not getting money, I don't move. Hmm. No, you know fancy driving around as before mm. as before so it's there's there's hardship there's it's, it's, it's not even it's not a joke yeah yes, it's not a joke. so as an it uh, person i know the industry is quite an expensive one because when yes. you want to buy equipment most of the equipment are uh, i mean imported into, into yes. the country and they use foreign currency to buy all of these things and with the dollar going high and yes. being above seven cities and all of that do you see the effect as well in your yes, industry? Yes, I, I see the effect. Uh, like last month, uh, I purchased, uh, so I do uh, purchasing for my company. Last month, we purchased an external drive. Mm. That was a one terabyte. It was around 300. And then yesterday, I called to ask the new price. It was 350 something. The dollar had moved to 8.2. Mm. So it, it affects us. Like, it's, you, you see it. It's not, it's not even a joke. It's the, the effect is on the dollar and the full increment is. is it's visible, you can, and also um, GRA brought a new uh, tax directive, which was 19.25. Uh, so as of now, if you are purchasing uh, goods um, um, worth maybe 10,000 or 12,000 CDs, you're going to pay an extra 2,300 and something, mm. which is going to government. It makes, um, yeah, it makes businesses, people who are, who are in the IT business or people who sell, they, they, like generally, it yeah. makes businesses hard uh, they find it tough because if i'm going to buy maybe five computers because i'm going to pay this tax then i'll say okay let me forgo the two let me buy just buy three you understand so they lose the people mm. running so we see it it's, it's visible yeah and fatima you are yeah. in sales yeah you meet a lot of clients you go out every day what are they telling you are they giving me the money are they i mean are they buying art spaces interestingly you need to sell, right? But the person, the client coming to you to advertise their product, they're advertising it so that people will see and they can afford their product or come and buy their product. But here is a case whereby there's increment in prices of goods and services. So I see your ad, I want to purchase, but I don't have the money to purchase your product. So how would the client even want to come and advertise if he's not making sales at the first place? As a sales personnel, the same problem that I'm facing. We have clients who give us high budgets within the year, but now they're cutting down costs. And others too are saying that, okay, this time we want to go low. Maybe we want to do guerrilla marketing. Maybe we don't want to do above the line so it's either above the line or below the line so they are trying to cut down costs so people try to turn away from you know doing the regular banner ads that they would regularly do on our platform but funny enough we've been able to build a clientele that have trust in us right but my issue is most of the regular Ghanaian just somebody who has a small business mm. and they know that okay this platform is a good platform for me to advertise my product because of the audience that they will meet at the end of the day right but they can't afford to mm. right and it's painful when you are not able to serve we try as much as possible to you know understand them and sometimes we work with their budget but we also do not just serve the Ghanaian market, we serve outside Ghana. And we are also, the platform we use to place our ad, we are also being charged for that. So if I reduce it for you, I'm going to also pay for using that platform in dollars. So I need to also bring in the issue of commission because yeah. now we are talking about your pocket yeah. as an individual yeah. who is working with an organization yeah. as a yeah. salesperson. Yeah. Are you making money? 
Personally, no. Because you're not getting any clients any cl to yeah, spend a lot of money to, to advertise. You need to meet your target to be able to end that commission. Mm -hmm. But here's a case whereby the clients that you have, they are rather not advertising or they are cutting down their cost. Mm -hmm. So if last year they gave me 100000 this year they don't even want to do even 50000 they want to go 30000 So how do I meet my, my target? And what the are the reasons day? they give you for the cutting reason, down the their reason, cost? The reason is because things are difficult, like the prices have gone up and they are not making sales. Mm -hmm. So they are selling. So they need to advertise to make sure that the money they are putting into this ad, they are going to gain it back. But if they are putting the money into the advert and they are not gaining the money back, mm -hmm. why are they going to advertise? Then they choose not to. They lay low. They do the regular adverts. Probably maybe they will, do their, they will use their social media platform to do their ad, which at the end of the day would not really meet the target that they want to meet using our platform. So that's some of the challenges that we do face. But um, I'm just hopeful that sometimes people don't really understand how advertising really works. Because there are times that I've seen ads that I'm not in the mood to purchase that product now. But later, in future, I have a lot of screenshots on my phone that I feel like, okay, maybe in future I would like to um, purchase from this company or this person. So most of the time, people want instant cash. They want to put in and then receive at the same mm -hmm. time. But if you are, they are putting in and they are not receiving, definitely they won't advertise. So it's... it's, it's so the it's, hardship has also yeah. affected the behavior of consumers. Of consumers and yeah. now when they see even ads, they yeah. don't really purchase, purchase because they are not going to get a return yeah. on, their investment. on their investment. And then George, yeah. you are in the media. I mean, you meet a lot of people who uh, you grant, grant you interviews and things like this. What are you getting from the ground? So here is the thing. Ghanaians tend to be um, swayed by the mood of the economy a lot of the times. You know, like people, it's, it's a human psychology when there's a lot of pressure on you to and daily demands for you to meet and all that. that. Sometimes you walk to somebody, you would want to speak to the person about one thing or another, and the person is like, you, I'm, I'm not in the mood. It's not because the person does not want you to listen to them all, but they, they, they need to prioritize what they are doing. The person is going after his daily bread and you go about chasing the person for interview. The person goes like, I'm not, I'm not into this. There are some times when you meet people and you get to understand how hard the economy is being on them and you feel like maybe you feel you are in a position to help. These are people struggling to get their daily bread. These are people that are struggling to go by. I mean, we see this all the time. We, we feel it. You go to the streets and you see people sleeping on the street. These are people that struggle to get their, just their daily bread. So this, these are the realities we, we get to see by our interaction with people. Of course, I, I, as a publisher, I monitor the media space a lot. And you listen to the sentiments of Ghanaians, how bad the current economic situation is affecting them. It, it is like Mr. Ajman said, the reality is there. Mm. It, it, it is not about what I am saying or what I, 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 I sit here and not say. It is what is happening now. Mm. There's a popular saying that Ghanaians are magicians and clearly it's Alex, Fatima and George are magicians because they are, they are living. I mean, they are surviving. How are you surviving? So there is an, a, a question that we'll be getting some answers from them Right after this break, this is the lowdown. Don't go nowhere. Welcome back from the break. This is the lowdown. My name is Ni Akwe Ismail Akwe, and we are discussing the hardships Ghanaians are facing. This time, from the perspective of ordinary Ghanaians who are working in various sectors of the economy, the stakeholders have said their part. The big men, the government officers, have all said what they had to say. The experts have said a lot of things. But what are the people saying? We have in the studio George AC, Fatima Tahiru. And then Alexander Ajiman, and they are in IT, they, she's in uh, sales, and he's in the media. 
and they are telling us their own experiences. Now, let me come back to you, George. Can you just give me a range of your salary? Are you between a thousand, two thousand? Are you in the hundreds, or what's the range of your salary first, as a journalist? The very first one you mentioned. So you are between thousand and two thousand, and you spend almost four hundred CDs a day. Eh, sorry, a month on, on transportation. On transport alone. So let's assume. Let's take the middle part of it. Let's say a thousand five, and you spend about four hundred on transport alone. You eat as well every day, and you are not married. You don't have children, but. That money that you have, are you able to save any of that money? So that's 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 the issue because, like you said, I spend over four or close four hundred or more just on transport alone. Mm -hmm. Then comes other costs, utilities, everything, water, electricity, rent. rent, and all that. And then you move on. Sometimes, I mean, I'm like you said, I'm not married, but then you have somebody you need to. Maybe somebody that calls you here and there that depends okay, on you. Something. These are all things that I have to think about and know that there is a need to save. I'm schooling, and sometimes like it's, it is just a matter of grace. Sometimes you you are done at the end of the month and you look you look back and you're like, how did I do it? Where can we find that grace? Because I'm sure a lot of people who are watching us would also be thinking, how can we make it? How are you doing? Is there any secret besides the grace? You just, you just need to be measured in mm -hmm. exp you know, your expenditure. Okay. That is how you get by. And if there's the possibility for you to get into something by the side, a business or whatever it is, then yeah, you do so that. Is, is that what you are doing? Do you have a business on the side? Or you stop partying with the big boys, <laughs> as they say. I, I've, I've been trying to get a business on the side. That is still in the balance. But hopefully, okay. and that is that is one of the downsides. Because it, it takes money to make money. Okay. That's how come like, the rich always keeps getting richer and the poor stays poor. So if even if, depending on how big you are able to invest, it determines how much you can recoup. So those are all the things that sometimes you look at and you, you feel like you are you are cornered. Because mm -hmm. even though you have you are you are willing to make some investments to at least sustain you on the side, you look at how much you have and what the business world is out there and, and you, you, you you see that it's it, it will be hard. Because setting up a business in this country is not easy. It it comes with a lot of constraints. Of course, people will say these days the social media for you to like try and sell to people on the side and all that but it, it's it's not that easy mm. it's not that easy when you want to go big there's a lot of constraints even when you are doing it small the cost of um, um the things you, you even when you are into production the cost of input materials when you are in, so i tried doing some little important on the on the side like buying clothes and other stuff from outside mm. the country china to be precise and then get moving them but then you look you you ship say one month ago and sometimes let's say when you are doing pay on delivery you ship the goods and you you are calculated and told that oh the the cd or the dollar rate is at x and so when the goods arrive you are expecting to pay this the goods arrive in a month's time and you go to the warehouse and they tell you, look, we can't do that anymore. The rate has gone up, so you need to add up. Mm. Maybe you have already planned, you have already made your budget allocations and all that. Here comes the case that when you go to take the goods, it means that you have to um, transfer the extra cost to the consumer. You go to the consumer, please buy this at this rate, and they are like, why, why, why should I buy it at this rate? I used to buy it at that rate. They are also facing the same challenges you are facing they also have they are also capitalist strained so how do you we reconcile all these things and so there's a ripple effect exactly. of the situation exactly from consumer to importer to everybody everybody yeah exactly. fatima yeah what's your magic word i mean how do you do it yeah um apart from my day-to-day -day job that i do my regular job as a sales personnel i'm also a makeup artist okay so that's something that's regardless at least if i get one gig two gig i'm able to sustain myself with the cash that i get so i'm not even able to save as much as i want to save from my gig because if the salary is being taken i will buy the transportation the food stuffs that we buy and other stuff 
I rely on my gig that I get from the makeup um, that I do. But my my problem here is that everything in Ghana keeps increasing, right? But salary doesn't increase. Mm. That's the problem. And I was talking to a friend last night, and he said to me, it will only take a thoughtful employer to want to sit back and understand the situation and say, okay, I understand what my employees are going through, and I think I want to take this measure. But ask yourself, as the employer, if you are selling and people are not buying, what are you going to use to increase the salary Challenge, of your employees? Yes. That's why I say to take only a thoughtful employer to do that. So that's the problem that we are facing, because if I'm very sure that if products or goods services are being increased, and salaries and people's uh, livelihoods is being um, better. Like I'm sure that people won't be complaining a lot mm. because if you are taking from me, you should be giving more to me also. So that's what I'm I don't know where we are heading as a country, and we keep saying that let's give chance to the youth to the youth it's the same youth that we have in universities who are src presidents and it all starts there corruption starts from there i've been a student i've seen it happen they they, they mishandle funds at that level so if we are saying that the old people are not doing it we've given the chance to them and they are not doing it is it the youth that will do it i think we have to have the mentality of having a developmental change I think that would be the only thing that can change the situations that we are having in the sense that we don't need a politician to come and sit or stand and tell us that, oh, when I come out, I would, I would, I would reduce the, the, is it the dollar rate? They'll do something about the dollar rate. They'll reduce for prices. They'll do this. They'll do that. Those are promises that we've had over the years. And that's why we're agitated because we are like, you said you do this. So why is dollar going up? Why is the fall prices going up? That's what we are, we are talking about. So if we have a developmental change mentality or plan, whereby if it's backed by law, any government that comes in power, whether you are old, you are young, because as I said, the reason why I bring the comparison between the youth and the old is because we have youth in positions in universities, right? And these are the same people that come out and join politics and they become leaders today, right? So I'm saying that when we have this plan in place whereby we know that we don't need to go for rallies for this person to come and promise me reducing dollar, increasing uh, salary, uh, uh, redu reducing four prices and stuff like that. Okay, if you come to power, this is what you're supposed to do. If it's two years, if you're supposed to build more hospitals, we are supposed to do this or that. It's a developmental plan that has been set and is backed by law. So when the person comes, we know that this is what they are coming to work on. So they will work on that. Because if we want to make Ghana Dubai, we can make Ghana Dubai. We said we have Dubai. But was it a developmental plan? No, it wasn't. If we really want to make Ghana Dubai, we can make it. Dubai is not different. They started from somewhere. Deserts. But they are where they are today. What shows that we can't do? We can't do it. But it's just that we don't have that plan. Everybody who comes in power is looking at making personal themselves gains. rich. It's personal gains. It's quite interesting how you bring the issue of leadership from yeah. different areas yeah. of the economy. Because yeah. you are looking at students' level, yeah. to the level of employers, yeah. and then the governments themselves. Yeah. Of the developmental plan you are mentioning, yes, all of them have plans, yeah. but it's not... A united plan it's not yeah. a plan that's collective yeah. that uh, is going to be followed by everybody in the country but what is your personal plan i want to talk to you about that alex your personal plan how do you manage to save money and to make ends meet because they say Ghanaians are magicians because we still you still see people going to work <laughs> you still see be, people eating their banku and their foods you, see, you still see people partying and having fun but the same people are also complaining so how do we make it? How do you make it? So I, I personally um, don't rely on my salary. Okay. My salary is good, but it's just to maintain, just, just for maintenance and a few expenses. Mm. You should always have passive income coming in. You should always network yourself more. Uh, people come to me for consultancy, like consultancy, mm. because I'm an IT expert, and then I charge. I charge. I, people come to me, okay, they have this side, they have this network side. I charge, I develop it for them. So that's my side. And we we'll always um, 
make you a bit comfortable. Mm. Yes, so I, I urge everyone, anyone having salary uh, salary issue, if you speak to an employer and doesn't it doesn't go well, look for avenues, look for I mean, places. Use use your talent, your God given talent, your experience, your technical knowledge, and then um, work extra for yourself. I think so I, think I have a question for you though. Uh, where exactly in your mind do you think the problem is coming from? Yeah, nah. In it's, your opinion? In my opinion. Yes. I think um, our leadership, mm. a lot boils down to our leadership because there are certain decisions they take that affects everyone. Uh, I was speaking to a friend recently. Some of these contracts, when they come in the cabinet, some of them don't even read. Someone was saying they don't even read. And when it goes to, they just, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, and later on, there are repercussions. You hear Ghana has been sued, or this in Ghana government has been sued because we didn't honor, or you see, we, we hear all of, the, all of these stories. It boils down to leadership. Mm. I think the leaders, they are personally, for, they, are, they are there for their personal gains. A lot of them are, it's not, it's not um, they don't think about the ordinary Ghanaian. Mm. Yes, because I'm, I'm, I'm saying this because recently there's e levy talk. And then you can see most of the leaders are, oh, you leave you. But the Ghanaians want to understand the rationale behind it, the reasons why e levy should be implemented. There's not so much education. So we want to know why. Because when VAT came, I remember, it was the same, but then it was explained well. We understood, okay, so this is, VAT will help, you know, um, build, you know, more infrastructure, the economy will so Ghanaians okay, then let's accept it. So similar with Ilevi, we want to know what the Ghanaian is, is, is paying for. You see, what the yeah. Ghanaian is so that we yeah, so that's basically so so for it's you it's leadership. It's leadership. It's leadership. Yeah, How about you, leadership. George? Where do you think the problem is coming from? Is um, it from the Ukraine Russian war? Mm. Our politicians would want us to believe such, but let's look at it. We live in a country where those who make a lot of these decisions that have this rippling effect on us are not necessarily affected by the decisions. Mm -hmm. You look at the fuel. We all know that those in leadership do not necessarily buy fuel, right? They go to their, their institutions and they are giving coupons for their high consuming V8 and they are gone. They are good to go. Recently, the government announced that it is taking 10% of every teacher occupying a government um, um, accommodation as rent. How many of these, um, the president is not paying rent? His ministers are not paying rent. They, they occupy government accommodations for free. So if, the, if we are talking about how rent is affecting a young person like me, who is at this point in my life looking forward to beginning something like establishing something reasonable for myself i need to start a family i need to do this i need to it all takes money and i i i i, I go my landlord calls me at the end of the year and tells me that i am increasing uh, rent because cement prices have gone up and all that these people don't get those calls so they don't understand what it means for my landlord to talk about um, cement price increases the, the teachers are paying rent now they don't pay so how do these people understand the repercussions of their decisions? When people, when Ghanaians are saying that we want e-levy or we don't want e-levy, what forms the basis for the average Ghanaians to resist their e-levy? I think they need to, they need to understand things from the, from the average Ghanaians perspective and then also make decisions in the collective interest of the, of the entire Ghanaian citizenship. Now in parliament, it's all about the majority and the minority. Everybody has taken an entrenched position. E-Levy is not passing because majority, minority is, a, is against it. E-Levy must be passed by all means because government wants it to pass. But collectively, what do we want? This one says, I'll give free SHS. This one says, no, let's, let's, let's work around it. Can we just have a national dialogue? Can we all understand what we need collectively as a country and not what a government needs, what a party needs, or what an individual needs? We can keep on having these conversations each and every day, but then it comes to action, um, taking action. We live in a country where between 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. every morning, 
across all the media platforms. People sit on these radio and TV stations and bring up all the problems we face from our 19 whatever, 18 whatever, and prefer solutions, workable solutions between that, say, three, four hours of the day. We do that every single day, Monday to Friday. They do it Saturday, they do it Sunday. But then we are still where we are. It is about time we speak to ourselves and say, no, like we need to go beyond just the talking. Just me ba me reduce it for just say me ba me ma see deny is stable. We need to be proactive in, in managing things. Because things are not looking too good for us. We need to go beyond the talk. We'll be right back. This is the lowdown. We'll speak more about the issues of hardships and what solutions our guests would have for the government and also for the people of Ghana. We'll be right back after this break. Welcome back from the break. This is The Lowdown. My name is Ni Akwe Ismail Akwe. We are talking to some Ghanaians, ordinary Ghanaians who are working in various sectors and they are telling us their situation in this hard economy where everybody is complaining from fuel prices to the dollar exchange rate and everything. And now we are at the solutions. So Alex, what solutions or advice would you have for the government? Because I know definitely you have some things you think could be done differently than what is being done now. So what do you have in your mind? Yes, I think um, leadership is by example. As a leader, you need to sacrifice. Um, so let me bring back the e-levy. You know, government needs money. You can see there's no funds. Because currently, even um, national service uh, personnel, some have been paid in the last three months. And I think the government expenditure is, is high. The volume is so high. So I think government, first of all, need to cut down their salaries at 30% or even 25 That's those working in the government sector or you mean? It's ministers. It's, it's, oh, the ministers. Okay. Appointees. They need to cut down their salaries. They need to pack their V8s. You know, a, a lot of V8s. Like anytime you're driving, you see the, the V8s with, with their lights just passing. Just, and it's a whole convoy. They can just pack it, use their private cars, their salon. They only pick it up when they have, um, when they are traveling. Mm. And I think that will also save costs. Mm. As Ace was saying, the the fuel coupons should be should be stopped, should be halted. They should use their personal money to buy fuel. Then they, they will fill it. If you are riding your own personal car and it breaks down and you are maintaining it and it's all coming from your salary, then you will begin to feel what the ordinary Ghanaian feeling you know experience is lived so if you don't live the experience you you actually no matter what you do you can actually feel what the ordinary Ghanaian is, 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 is so um, for you it's about the feeling so when they feel do you think yes. that will bring solutions to the problems yes, of the country because, because then they'll, they'll, they'll be just like they'll think like as they'll be like okay it's, it's true hey, these days my expenses since I, I packed this vignette hey, now my fuel since this fuel uh, coupons were stopped I'm buying for maybe two thousand or three thousand, so I need to cut costs. Then they will un understand um, the plight the ordinary Canadian is, is, is going to. Because definitely they are the ones who put together the policies. Yes. And if they really understand and they can look for solutions, however they can, I think yes, that will change yes. some of the situations of the poor Ghanaians, especially exactly. who can't afford anything. Fatima, do you have any advice, any solutions in mind? Well, I think uh, with my solution would be my earlier submission that I said that we should go back to having a developmental plan backed by law. That's what I was trying to say, backed by law, so that if the government comes in, there's a plan. This is what we are doing. It goes that way. If you don't go according to it, then the law should hold you. But what's a plan without a will to get it done? There could be a plan. Yeah. Because Ghana has all, always had a plan. Yeah. But, but the law, it never happens. Yeah, because, because this is a situation whereby we have different parties coming into power mm. and we neglect old projects that are going on. 
and we start new ones because we want to show that when we came into power, we did this, we, do, we did that. And I'm saying, when we have projects that are ongoing, let's stick to those projects, complete them. It doesn't matter who started it, who, or who ended currently it. Currently, there's no money in the country, and that's why the taxes are coming in. That's why the decision so, to go to IMF and, or bring e-levy is still right. So we should still right. accountable so, yes. for all the taxes that are being taken from us. Let's see what the taxes are being used for. I feel like we don't hold these leaders accountable for things that they do. Mm -hmm. Because most of the time we come and talk, 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 and say so, give solutions and say, and it ends there. We don't hold them accountable. We are demonstrating and we are saying um, uh, all the demonstrations that we've had, right? Fix, your, fix, fix, the, fix, country. fix the country mm -hmm. and do, do so and so. And I'm saying, are we holding them accountable for the promises that they gave before we voted them in power? We are not. We are talking about it. But we need to hold them accountable. Let them understand that you promised us this and this is what we want to see. We can, we can demonstrate. What I've realized is that you can demonstrate, you can do whatever you want to do, but their ears are locked. Whatever they want to do is what they want to do. So that's what I was saying. Even if we want to change, we want to bring the youth to lead is it going to be different my question personally i feel no that's what i'm saying it starts from university src presidents i've seen it i've witnessed it what they do in the corruption it starts from there and they are the same people who come up because they are affiliated to these political parties so you can imagine if a corrupt uh, src president belongs to any of this political party he comes out he joins underground comes up becomes organizer goes like that gradually that's how it it goes in at the end of the day they are looking at benefiting them themselves like not any other person so what i'm saying is that we just need to hold our leaders accountable mm. leadership and it's going to go a long way personally i don't see it happening now because these are things that has happened before and we've spoken about it and it's, instead of it reducing, it's increasing. Unless maybe we are going to have a market where we have market for government workers, that their foodstuffs are expensive, and we have market for regular Ghanaians, that the foodstuffs are cheap. Then we have transportation for regular Ghanaians that is cheap. We have, like, everything, rent for regular Ghanaians is different. Then we know that, yes, they are feeling it. But if we are all going to the same markets, buying the same foodstuff, at the same rate, at the same price. No. Segregation. No. That's well, that's well said. No. <laughs> so, George, mm. what are your solutions to mm. government or advice, if you have any? So, here's the thing for me. I feel like the laxity in Ghanaians being too comfortable with whatever happens to us is too much. How am I am? Like, we are, we are too much like that. We just... Because of maybe because, <laughs> like you said, our magic, the magic we are able because of how we are able to survive it all the time. But we need to take a sit back and say that no, things definitely have to change. And how do we change it? Because it, we have to go beyond talking and then walking the talk. You bring the very people who are responsible for whatever has happened now whether it is the politician, whether it is the civil servant, you bring them here and they will sit here and tell you the very things that we are saying right now. They will be able to identify the same problems that we, we have. Like I said, we do this every time on our morning shows between 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. We prefer all the workable solutions that there is. So why aren't we taking the right measures to make it happen? We can. And it is, it, it is time we, we sit back and say that, yes, let's do it. Hey. Come on, we live in a country where if the police is working, it is a problem. If they, and, and it, we have gotten to a point where not even a single institution in this country can be singled out and say that this one, for this particular one, it is working perfectly. Why is it so? Our power sector, there is always challenges. Water sector, there is always challenges. Health, what have you. Of course, we cannot get up and solve all our, all our, our, our problems in a day. But once we have a sense that yes it is working we can all support it the igp came into office and we all could see how things were changing i don't know if it is still in that direction or probably he's, he has also been um, affected by the whole exactly. situation but then that is it we need to understand that there is the need to work towards something there's a collective goal for come on we talk of malaysia and all these places 
Nkrumah himself had to travel to some of these countries, build stuff for them, just to say that, oh, me, I'm Ghana, I am rich, mm -hmm. and so I want to give you some, but can we do that today? We go to these people to borrow all the time. Why is it so? Why is it so? Like, I, you, you, you begin to talk about these things and you feel sad. You begin to um, get passionate about it. But it's not always about the talking. Do you think there's a bright future for your children and even yourself in Ghana? Let's go to Ghana Airport today mm -hmm. and see the number of Ghanaian youth that are fleeing the country. There's no hope. No hope. I'm not saying that there can't be hope. There can be hope if we if we work towards it. But as it stands now, we need to work extra to, to, to revive that hope. We need to work extra to revive that hope. Like, and you see, the pol polarization of issues in this country is too much. The politicians are worrying us whether they are the opposition or the party in power. They can't just come into consensus and say that this is where we should be di we're heading towards. In the interest of me and you, no, it has to be about me uh, without you or you without me. Why, why should we be doing this to ourselves? Mm. It's not fair. I mean, we are here just for a moment. So if, if we are going to be here for this while, let's, let's make things right. So that at the end of the day, when we get, when we get somewhere, we die and we sit somewhere, and we, we, are, we, we are given the opportunity to reflect on what we left behind. We wouldn't be hitting ourselves in the head to say that, oh, I could have done better or something. Fatima, do you also have friends who are leaving the country because of the hardships in the country? I know someone who is out of the country mm. and he's been there for six months and he wants to come back. Oh. And the friends here are pleading. He's bought his tickets. He's to leave today. But yesterday, there is a conference call. There is a meeting. They are pleading. Yeah, he shouldn't he come shouldn't back. He shouldn't come. If he comes, he will regret it for the rest of his life. And what if he's facing difficulties where he is? He's better there. <laughs> That's what that they are telling him. That difficulty is better there because at the end of the day, the dollar is high. Mm. So stay there and suffer there. That suffering is better than the suffering in Ghana here. I'm telling you. Mm. Just yesterday, we were having a conversation. They were literally like begging this person that please stay. Don't come. Whatever the situation, just they will try and figure out something for you. And someone is like, let him come and we'll find out. And the person is like, no, yeah. don't let him come. He's going to regret it. And six months in U.S., you earn three thousand, four thousand a month. CDs or dollars? Dollars. And now you want to come back home for what? Because you are down with the pro whatever it says. If you are going to be there illegally or what, just be there. <laughs> Don't get caught. <laughs> yes, I'm serious. Don't get That's how bad it has become. For youth to be telling their fellow youth that don't come back to the country, then that's worse. Do you see any hope? Do you see a future for yourself and your children in this country? I'm sure our great-grandparents used to say we need a better Ghana for the next generations. And those next generations have come and we are part of them. We are sitting here and we are talking about the future for the upcoming generations. I'm sure it's going to go like that. I it's don't going to be hope. better. You mean? Better? I hope so. <laughs> Alex, any hope? <laughs> no, no, no. Apparently no hope. But oh, I... do you also want to leave the country? <laughs> Are you part of uh, those planning to go? Oh, I reserve that. <laughs> for another show. But then, um, to buttress on uh, Fatima's point, like, we need a blueprint. We need something. It doesn't have to be MPP, NDC. This is it. This is where we are going. With that, Ghana will move forward. Otherwise, there's no hope. Yeah. There's no hope. Every day, people are fleeing. So without there's blueprint, no there's and, no and hope. A perfect example was the Ukraine, Russia. We had Ghanaians out there. And then they, they decided not to come back. Even there was a plane bringing it. They said, no, no, no. They had rather die there. You are even saying, even in Africa come. now, Nigeria, the Nigerians there, they don't want to come back. Yes. Yeah. Why? Nigeria is like giant of Africa, if you are going to put it. But today, everybody is complaining. Everybody is crying. Four, people are now buying for and they are storing it in their houses, their rooms. And uh, apartments, estate developers, they are telling their, their residents that, please, so everybody buy your generator. We can't buy fuel to power the gen. So everybody buy your own generator to get your own fuel and power your... Like, things are becoming bad. Yeah, there's a problem. It goes okay, beyond Okay, George, Ghana. you want to add something to it? You see, 
the fact that our solution to every problem in this country is let's vote out <laughs> the government is a big problem. Like that is our only solution is in this country or in Africa. If if there is heat small, yeah. the our main our main result is the result opposition. Is, let's let's kick them out. Let's bring somebody out. But these are people that we've rotated each and every uh, maximum eight years, four years, we kick one out and we bring it. And they, they've, they've become accustomed to it. Now, we live in a country where the opposition knows that by hook or crook, <laughs> unless oh, maybe something divine happens, <laughs> 2024, they are coming yeah, into power. Somebody has already started putting in place plans for him to come and steal. I'm, I'm sorry if this is being too blunt, but it is happening. People have already started planning. Those who are about to exit, if it happens, have also started preparing themselves. The people are preparing their exit package. Personal one, not the one that the constitution <laughs> is giving them. <laughs> so we, we need we need to we need to we need and look we this country we have institutions, state institutions that are supposed to work and bring profit to the country. About fifty plus of them over the past years, I think five, ten what a decade or so, none of them has made profits. People should start thinking about managing the state as the same way they would manage their personal businesses. Mr. President, if somebody is not performing, I mean, I work for a company where if I don't perform, my boss might kick me out. And that is part of what drives me every day. So why is it that the, the person you appointed as CEO of boss, what have you, Cocoa Board, whatever, is making losses and you are still keeping him? Because the person has funded political campaign. The person brought you to chief. power. So that is what brings us back to the fact that we kick them out. And it is because the person knows that if I force and I join somebody and the person comes to power, I'm going to rip. Even if they make me CEO and I make losses, I'll still be there. We need to rethink how we, we, we manage our state institutions as well. If we have stronger state institutions, things should, be start, uh, should, should start getting better. At least if we can't say anything at all, let's look at the police service for once. When the new IGP came, and we all started confessing to the changes that were happening. Let it cut across. Let about four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, or all our institutions start to exhibit such changes. We will begin to see that things will, because it, it, it's, it's a, a block of pieces that comes together to form the economy, the, to form the nation. If the Ministry of Finance is working effectively, if Cocoa Board, if Boss, if each one of them is functioning better to an extent collectively it comes and then it drives the nation forward so we should look at all these things and hopefully then the hope we are all praying for will come so strong state institutions drive the nation forward and these are the words of george ac our guest <laughs> is a media professional thank you very much for coming fatima adagbila Tahiru. Thank, thank you for coming too and then alex ajiman is an it expert fatima is a sales executive thank you very much for coming uh, lady and gentlemen this is the lowdown watch us every monday on ghana web tv and on all of ghana web digital channels my name is ni akwe ismail akwe stay safe mm -hmm.